Today on BRS TV, we have our second episode of the Vertex 120 Clownfish Build. In today's episode, we're gonna get this tank up and running. We'll hit on the aquascape with the rock and sand, install the return pump, then move on to filtration, calcium and alkalinity solution, install the controller, auto top off, lights, power head, battery backup, and then fill the tank and show how we're gonna cycle this thing. We have two primary goals with this tank, which are going to help make sure the clown harem is a success provide adequate filtration that can handle the heavy feeding schedule and provide an abundance of habitat so the more timid clowns can escape the aggression circle of the more dominant clowns. You can see Lou is pretty close to finished aquascaping the rock using Pucani. We reviewed a lot of similar tanks with rose bubble tips and wanted to avoid the wall of anemones look that many have. Instead, Lou built this ridge which gets progressively larger from left to right. Hopefully this will give the aquascape a more three-dimensional look once the BTAs are covering it. We opted to go with Pucani for two reasons. First, because it presents the bubble tips with the type of habitat they seem to prefer in an aquarium, which is a structure filled with holes where they can attach their foot deep within the structure. The porous network of holes Pucani's known for also maximizes the available surface area for filtration, which is going to be key in this tank. We decided to use the Ocean Direct Live Original Grade Live Sand. Unlike most of the other live sands, this brand comes moist rather than wet with a breathable bag that maintains natural bacteria from the ocean. We took the sides and back off the stand, so putting this together will be easy. This is one of the more unique features of this stand and the ability to access the sump from every side and the extra height is going to make this install and the ongoing maintenance a lot easier. Since we're starting with the Vertex tank, stand, and sump, it seems only fitting that we go pretty heavy on the Vertex gear for filtration. We're going to use a new Vertex V6 circulation pump capable of almost 1,600 gallons per hour and can handle up to eight feet of head pressure. There's a base plate with rubber feet on it to reduce vibration transfer and noise. We're also going to plumb the tank using silicone tubing to further reduce the vibration and noise. And you can see that we've already hard plumbed the overflows using red PV and ball valves. For filtration, we started with the Vertex Omega 150. To be honest, I've been using this on a lot of tanks lately simply because it works. They're quiet, they operate in a wide range of depths, and don't require constant tuning. It's that last part that really gets me. As long as the sump level is stable, this thing is super easy to adjust and the least finicky skimmer that I've used. We're going to be feeding this tank a lot to reduce food aggression, so it's important that we have a highly functional nutrient export system, and this is going to be the backbone bone of that system. For chemical filtration, we're using the Vertex RxU 2.0. Other than looking attractive, the thing I like most about the media reactor is the ability to hold carbon and GFO in place by sliding the filter plate down and locking it in with this screw. This is a feature that's overlooked on most reactors. The plate allows me to mix my GFO and carbon together and hold it tightly in place so it doesn't tumble around where the hard GFO would eventually grind the softer carbon to dust. I typically use a one-third GFO to two-thirds carbon mix. The GFO will help prevent algae growth and the carbon will keep the water crystal clear. The calcium and alkalinity requirements will be pretty low because there won't be any corals in this tank. However, we do want to promote fast growth of coralline algae. The most important component to coralline algae growth is maintaining calcium and alkalinity, but I believe alkalinity in particular is the most important. Normally I'd use Kelkwasser in my auto top off in low consumption instances like this, but we have this Vertex Libra doser and storage containers, so why not? We're going to use a Neptune Apex controller. The removable back on the stand made it super easy for us to mount everything directly to the board. We also made everything nice and tidy by drilling a few holes and routing all of the cords onto the back side of the stand. This not only looks sharp, but it also keeps all of the outlets out of the sump area and should be safer. For those of you that have been with us for a while, you won't be surprised that we went with the Tunes Osmolator for our auto top off. The magnetic level sensors are super easy to attach. The primary sensor has no moving parts. And most importantly, I've never had one fail on me. Circulation in a tank like this is always a problem because the anemones like to crawl around a lot and then get sucked up into the pumps. For that reason, we want to keep the quantity of pumps to a minimum, so we're going to use a pair of the Vortec MP40s. And while I wouldn't call them anemone safe, they do have foam covers which will help keep them out of the pump. What's also nice is the MP40s have a battery backup option as well, which will help keep the circulation going for as long as 36 hours in the event of a power outage. 
A number we confirmed ourselves during an outage at the previous warehouse that lasted days. This is one of those elements that will help bulletproof the tank and protect the harem from inevitable events like power outages. Lighting was a tough choice. Anyone who's watched our show for a while knows how much we like the Vertex Illumina because of the even par color blending and sleek fixture look. That said, the guys at Vertex are literally going to kill me for putting a competitor's light on their tank, but I got a pair of Radeon Gen 3s here and the team's dying to get some experience with them. Right off the bat, I know I'm going to like the actual buttons much better than the old version. The case is sleeker, I've noticed the fan is really quiet, and they now include indigo and UV on the base model, which is perfect for a 120 like this. The last element is the neotherm heaters and we're ready to go. We got the back of the tank completely wired up and ready to snap back onto the stand. It does take a bit of force to get these panels back onto the frame, so it's best to do while it's not filled and still movable. Once we have everything plugged in, we can snap on the sides and doors, make sure the tank is level, and fill it with fresh salt water. All that's left to do now is cycle the tank and get it ready for fish. We're going to do that using the Red Sea Reef Mature Pro Kit for the first three weeks, and then for the next five weeks, we're going to add the amount of food we plan on feeding each day to get the cycle stabilized around that volume of nutrients. At this point, we'll do close to 100% water change and remove the nutrients from the cycle and organics on the surface of the dry rock, which have broken down during this time. At the end of this two-month cycle, the tank will be stabilized and ready for our fish. In the next episode, we'll add some fish, some bubble tip anemones, go over the feeding schedule and our planned maintenance cycle. If you have any questions or comments about this build or the equipment selected, check out the comments area down below. If this is your first time with us, subscribe because we do this every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV and two months from now with the third episode in the Vertex 120 Clown Harem build.